And that's why you're so important. You are the historical armed militia unorganized in the Constitution. And at the same time, you're the new political army, which is why, which is why we'll probably never have to actually use our guns politically. When you return home, you will not have to dodge bullets like George Washington did after one battle when his coat was filled with four bullet holes. You probably won't have to jump into a foxhole in this country, nor stand in front of a tank. You are today's, what I call now, not so silent army of freedom. And we campaign and we vote. It's our job to make sure that the right, right representatives get elected for Congress. We elect the right president at this end of the mall. And that we are very fastidious in selecting the right judges back in your home states so that they can perk their way up to the Supreme Court so we have the right decisions there in the future. I used to stand right there in the middle of the crowd as a security guard, not knowing what to do about the problems that I saw in this country until I really joined a team of like-minded people like you. And I'm still doing my part. Heller case number one, you may know, it took us 15 years from its inception to get our decision at the Supreme Court. And now that Heller number two has been rejected by the DC court system, I say that's a glorious day. My team, the NRA, the National Rifle Association, and the Bill of, right, Bill of Rights Foundation will be spending probably the next three years working and fundraising as the Heller 2 case perks its way up to the Supreme Court. We're going to keep after them and keep after them and keep after them until D.C. gets it right. When D.C. gets it right, all of America will know how to get it right on the Second Amendment. So with the leadership that you meet today, you can return home armed with new ideas, new motivation, and help get out the vote. Campaign for that special candidate that wants smaller government, no deficits or deficit spending, and is very pro-Second Amendment. And also, he wants not to change America, but wants to return America to liberty, to freedom. freedom. Here's my message number two. This is a trigger moment, I believe, in our nation's history. When you return home, your responsibility to your country, your family, and your future generations to give them a land of liberty is to campaign not for 15 years like Dan and I did fighting for Heller 1 case, not even for three years like the battle we have in front of us, but just take one year, and now it's even just six months maybe, Take one year uh, to take your place in history. Get listed in the history books uh, for making the year 2010 the year you turned this country around just like our founding fathers did. Benjamin Franklin and Patrick Henry and Thomas Jefferson and James Madison and George Washington. When you walk in their footsteps, folks, it's an awesome feeling. So remember, you have your finger in the dike. So now, energize for freedom! Yeah. Freedom!
Nobody knows who I guess we have a dead spot. Let's fill it with freedom! 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 They probably heard us at the White House. Did they hear us on Capitol Hill? Freedom! Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our next speaker, the President of Gun Owners of America, Mr. Larry Pratt. Well, as I look around, it's so good to see all these terrorists out here. <laughs> Janet Napolitano, she... She figured as governor of Arizona that we didn't have a border problem, but she knows who the real enemy is. <laughs> and Bill Clinton's been running cover for her too. Watch out how you guys speak out there, you know. Words can have consequences. Remember Oklahoma City? Yeah, I do. And I also remember the Waco barbecue that your attorney general gave us. Thanks a lot. Yeah, these people have a lot of chutzpah. That's a, that's about it. Well, you know, the thing that's been lost in this debate, at least uh, part of a lot of the Republicans, we're in a war. The other side knows they're at war because they started it. They're coming for our freedom, for our money, for our kids, for our property. They're coming for everything because they're a bunch of socialists. And meanwhile, we've got some feckless leaders in the opposition party that want to make nice. Well, I'll tell you what, folks. We can get rid of these nice guys and get some fighters. That's why we have some primaries this year. And we need to send them a message that we're coming for the Republican rhinos, the Republicans in name only, not just the Democrats. That's the second event in November. This country was founded on the idea that we the people do hereby ordain and establish. We are the boss. Actually, the boss, as our founders knew, is God himself. And then they established a constitution, and that's over these leaders of ours. We better get the message to them that they're supposed to be followers. Our followers, our employees, they work for us, and if they get uppity, if they get to be rebellious and seditious, we're coming for them. Yeah. 